Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in, people of God. There is a word from the Lord on today. Come, come on in. Come on in. The Lord is good. He is greatly to be praised. Come on in, folks. Hallelujah. I hope you had a good night's rest. And I tell y'all, it has been a blessed adventure on my end. Woo. And I just want to say to all the new mommies and those that got babies, woo, may the Lord be with you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We had my little cupcake over last night. And, woo, oh, it was a rough night. I did not get that much sleep. Shoot, my babies is 18 and 19. So it's a whole nother ball game. But what I will say, I thank the Lord for the strength to get it done. Hallelujah. So I'm a little bit whispering. I'm not going to be extremely loud today because I'm trying to let the princess rest. Bless God. I'm trying to let her rest. So hallelujah. God is so good, though. In spite of all, God is so faithful, y'all. I love God and all his children. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord on today. Good morning, Myra. Good morning, everyone on TikTok. Good morning, everyone on Facebook. Hallelujah. If you have not went over to our website, uh, uh, makeoverministry.com, and uh, joined our subscriber list, our email list, or become a member on there, please do. It'll bless you. I will be able to reach out. It's so, when I tell y'all, it is so much good stuff that we got going on and you want to be able to be in the know and be in the loop so go over to our website makeovermistry.com and make sure you at least um good morning jasmine make sure that you at least become uh you can become a member or you can just become you can join our subscriber list so our email subscriber list so make sure you do that hallelujah God is so faithful. So I was at the gym yesterday, y'all, and I got on the um, Good Morning Prophet Stevens, and um, I got on the, the elliptical, and I got on there, and for some reason, when I first got on, I was like, I want to do three miles, and I was like, three miles? You ain't did three miles, and you ain't even, you almost wore yourself out the last time you was here. You didn't even get a mile and a half. You told me you want to do three miles. And so I get on the on the elliptical and I'm getting it. Now, for the first second I got on there, because my workout buddies, they were still asleep. The work, my workout buddies was getting a rest. So the kids didn't go with me. So I'm on there. I'm there by myself. And I, the, my first thought was, man, I got to do it by myself. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, you are never alone. And so I clicked on, I had my hair, my earbuds in, I clicked on TikTok and it was a woman of God preaching and her, the first thing I heard her say is, the Lord said, you are never alone. I said, well, bless God, come on in the room. So I listened to her broadcast the whole time. Y'all, I'm in there on the elliptical and I'm just blessing God. I'm talking out loud to the Lord. And so um, the Lord began to show me how the spirit of lazy the spirit of complacency and the spirit of comfortability are all spirits that they have that have to manually be dismantled. It's not something, oh, you pray for me not to be lazy. No, you have to get up. You have to get up and you have to resist the temptation to be lazy. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. So I'm on there, y'all, and I get to a mile and a half and I was like, oh, God, I'm tired. I'm tired and the Lord said you I will take I will help you go as far as you want to go hallelujah amen um the Lord said I will help I will give you the strength to go as far as you want to go I'm here to help I, and he, he was just ministering to me about how many people don't get it's not that they can't it's that they won't it's not that they can't. It wasn't going to kill me to do no three miles. So, y'all, I'm on there. I get one mile done, a mile and a half. I got two miles done, and I was like, oh. And so, I began to speak in tongues. And I'm going to tell y'all a second wind came. And I'm getting it, getting it, getting it. And before I look up, y'all, I did three miles. I was, and I wasn't even out of breath. I wasn't even my tardest self. Come on. And so, the Lord said, I will take you as far as you're willing to go. I'm going to give you the strength to go as far as you are willing to go. But you can't stop at the pain. You can't stop because you're lonely. You can't stop because you got to do it by yourself. My God, come on. You can't stop because it don't make sense to others. You can't stop because it does not agree with others. You can't stop in the middle of that thing. You got to keep going. The spirit of lazy 
complacency and uncomfortability are not you can't pray about those things you got to be like nike and just do it you just got to do it you just got to do it and you got to tap in to your heavenly source you got to tap in and so y'all promise y'all i'm on that elliptical and i was saying thank you god yes god i love you bless your name oh god lord i thank you you're a good god i love you jesus glory to your name hallelujah jesus <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all because that's the only way I got through. And then when I got really tired, I literally began to speak in tongues and the Lord, the helper showed up. Come on. See, many of us, we, we, we need something from God, but we just want to hand it to us. No, it's not how it works. Faith without works is dead. And many of us are hiding in our prayer closet when we need to be getting up, getting it done. We got the faith. We got the prayer. Come on. I was telling somebody yesterday. I said, listen. We got to begin to pray. Oh, I'm in my prayer closet. Take your prayer closet to the gym. Take your prayer closet to the thing you need to do because your prayer closet is in your heart. It's not an actual. It, it, that's nice to have a prayer closet. That's good. But if you, if there are things that you need to be accomplishing in the earth and all you're doing is in the prayer closet, that's good. I love that for you. But there are things that you need to be doing. Sometimes you got to watch and pray. Yes, come on in the room. And so let's uh, let's be mindful that we are really doing our part. Come on, yes, you've got to put that work in. You have got to. How much more will the Lord bless the hands of the children of God if we put our hands to the plow? The children of the devil, they know how to work. Yeah, they know how to work. They out there, they, they got ambition. They out there getting it, but they in the wrong kingdom. That's why I say I, I love when a dope boy gets saved. It ain't nothing like a saved dope boy. I mean the real kind that's saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled, baby. Because he got grind and he got God. Come on. Ain't nothing like it. It ain't nothing like it. You ain't got to pump him. You ain't got to prime him. You ain't got to beg him to go to church. He ain't scared to go to the highways and the byways. He ain't scared to go to the crack house and the corner. He ain't scared to go to the hood and preach. Come on now that that's what i'm talking about right there hallelujah bless your name oh god he's a good god he is a good god hallelujah amen okay okay listen so i'm excited there is a word from the lord on today let's tap in people of god let's tap in hallelujah lord we thank you for your word on today for you are a good god you are merciful you're kind you're all knowing god we thank you for you are the great helper you are the great mind regulator you are the great deliverer oh jesus glory to your name god we thank you that we can press into your presence and everything that we need is in your presence my god come on you will strengthen us hallelujah you said greater work shall we do hallelujah we will not be able to do those greater works if we don't put our hands on the plow. God, we ask that you bless us on today. God, give us wisdom, strength, and endurance to run this race. For your word says that, that only those that endure to the end shall be saved. We want to be saved. We want to be saved, God. Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Bless your name in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. And let me say this, okay? Hallelujah. Bless your name, my God. Let me see what you said because I missed it. Let me say this. Um, I need you to know your waistline is a part of your witness. Your waistline is a part of your witness. My God. Hallelujah. Uh, your waistline is a part of your witness. So many of the people of God, we overweight. I'm not talking to you, talking to me too. We overweight and it's not a good witness. It's not a good witness. And let me talk to my women who I married. It's not good. When I gained weight in my marriage, although I would gain weight because there was a lot going on that was not productive. But either way, I still got to give an account for myself. But your husband should not have to look at a woman in the street to see a good body. It's not good. I don't know why we get in God and we get big and we get complacent and we in our prayer closet. Your prayer closet. Meet me at Planet Fitness. Glory with the prayer, the prayer closet. Come on, let's watch and pray on the, on the elliptical, on the treadmill, on the rowing machine, on the stepper. Come on, in the room. Come on. And so we have to be mindful that our, our waistline is a part of our wit. Witness. And it's not good to say, oh, okay, I love God. And we just as full of, of gluttony as every as the world is full of. We don't want to, we don't want the homosexual to be, oh, you know, he's gay, he's full of lust, she's gay, the fornicator and all of that, but it's still lust of food. It's still lust of chicken. 
Come on. We got the fat overweight preachers and fat overweight pastors talking about the uh, talking about sin. Listen, it's sin to overeat. Come on. And I get it. A lot of times you be use foods to comfort yourself. I get it. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt and had to go up two sizes. Yep. My God. Come on. But at some point you have to remember that your waistline is a part of your witness. So I had to remember that and remind myself of that on the uh on the um uh elliptical yesterday. That this is just this is just where we at. Only those that endure to the end shall be saved. So let's let's be mindful, y'all. Let's be mindful to, to uh remember our body is the temple of God. We have to honor it in such a way. I want to last and see the devil. Many, many of the people of God, once you done came out of sin, you ain't doing drugs no more. You ain't having sex no more with people. You don't got no business. You ain't partying all night. You ain't drinking. You ain't smoking. You ain't doing drugs. That's not your, that's not your testimony. You done forgave people. But guess what? If we're still overeating, the devil will use that against you. I'm not trying to die uh, early for high blood pressure. I'm not trying to die early because I like chicken and cake. Come on, y'all. Let's do better. We got to do better. So I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to me, too. Hallelujah. Let's get to the root of it. Because I said, I just said yesterday, I gave a message. And I was just sharing how I'm going through a divorce. And I said for myself, I'm not going to eat my way through this divorce. It's just not. I can't. I can't. I can't personally stand to be any bigger. I don't, I don't know how people do it. I'm not comfortable with my own self at this size. So I'm not going to eat my way through it. So what do we do now? You have to make a decision. I'm not going to go through. I'm not going to go through the way I used to go through. Come on, let's talk about it. I'm not going to go through the way I used to go through. I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. And I'm going to get through this another way. Okay? I'm not going to go through this in depression. Does that mean that it's not easy? Does that mean that every moment is sunshine and rainbows? Absolutely, every moment is not sunshine and rainbows. But I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand. And every moment that my heart begins to feel like it's overwhelmed, I say, God, keep me because I want to be kept. Turn on me some worship music that keeps my spirit continually being refueled. Come on. I tap into the presence of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Come on, we have to decide how am I going to go through? I think no one really told me that. How am I going to go through? Come on. I, I was thinking about this yesterday. Each level comes with new things and we have to learn how to first be, t be rejected. Many of us stop at the rejection stage. You got to learn how to be rejected. So everybody, you're not for every, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. It's all right. Come on, but I'm some I'm one somebody's cup of coffee. Bless God. Come on. So you have to you gotta first learn how to be rejected without turning back. It's a part of life. This is why you cannot protect your children from it. When they're little and they're growing up and people don't like them, don't teach them, oh, you gotta play with Johnny. Are you no, you teach them, Johnny, it's okay. Everyone is not gonna like you, but it is still okay. You don't have to change in shape into somebody else to be accepted. You got to learn how to be rejected. Then you got to learn how to be talked about. See how this person's right here don't got nothing else better to do but be on my lap. You got to learn how to be talked about. So may God bless you. And this is the scary thing. People don't know when they put their mouth on the people of God. You better remember, read Elijah. Uh, when they talked about the prophet Elijah because he was going bald and a bear mauled him to death. They got killed by a bear because they put their mouth on the people of God. Come on. And so we got to be mindful. We have to be mindful. You got to learn how to be talked about and it not pull you out of what you're doing. Come on. You got to learn how to be mishandled. God, I bless your name. You got to learn how to be rejected. Learn how to be talked about. Learn how to be uncomfortable. Learn how to do it afraid. Learn how to do it by yourself. These are things that the, the life gives you the opportunity to learn. But many of us don't learn because we don't like the feeling of it. It's a part of life. Can't change it. You cannot change it. Come on, everybody is not going to go with you and everybody is not going to agree with you. Ooh, help us, Holy Ghost. So you got to make a plan. I have a, a message on my YouTube channel called The Pain Plan. What do I do? I have to have a plan in place of what I am going to do when pain comes. Come on. But today and in this season of life, I had to realize I got to make a plan. I might not know what I'm going to do. 
because God is changing me and he's transforming me and he's taking me to a new level. But what I do know is what I'm not going to do. Yes. And I'm not going to eat my way through. Come on. I'm not going to come out of this thing 50 pounds heavier. I'm not going to come. No, that's not the testimony. Hmm. You have to make it up in your mind. I'm talking to my parents who have wayward children. You can't do nothing about that. They're, they're grown. You have done everything that you can do. You got to go out there. You got to let them bump their head. You have to learn how to not be distracted by people that you have offered help. But they rejected it. Yeah. My God, the pain plan. You can catch it on my YouTube channel, which is called Makeover Ministry. I think it's a part one and part two. It's 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 probably a year ago, year and a half ago. So you're gonna have to scroll for a little bit through my uh videos, but it's called the pain plan. Yeah. Bless your name, oh God. Come on. I want us to understand that, that God knows everything that you are going through, every situation that you got, that you're facing. And I just thank God because he reassured me. He said, I wouldn't have allowed it to happen if it was going to take you out. There's nothing that is going to happen in your life that God is not going to take, that God is not know. Oh, that's, it's not like he's up, he's in heaven saying, oh, well, I did not see that was going to happen to Timmy. I don't hate that that happened to Timmy. That's just awful. No, come on. Yeah. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Listen. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. The race was not given to the swift, neither to the strong, but only those that endure to the end. You have to learn how to go without. <laughs> You have to learn how to go without. You got to learn how to do it by yourself. You got to learn how to do it sleepy. Yes. Listen, my children, they, they struggling with the do it sleepy lesson. I'm sleepy. I don't going to be able to go today. My daughter didn't holler. She got an interview today. I'm just going to reschedule. In, in real life, when you got real bills, you can't reschedule. It's not a real thing. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We have to learn how to push past the where I would normally stop. This is the part that normally would break me. <laughs> What? You saw me in your dream? Hey Amen. Please tell me about it. You can definitely send me a message. I love to know. I think it's a blessing. God speaks and he confirms things through dreams. So that's a blessing. Um, but you have to learn how to go past where you would normally stop. This is the place I normally would stop. Come on. This is the place I normally would pull back. You have to learn how to get to that place and still go past it. God said, I am willing to take my children as far as they are willing to go. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on. Many of us, we stop because it's uncomfortable. We stop because it hurts. We stop because we talked about it. We stop because we don't want to be lonely. We stop because we don't like the uh, discomfort of it. We stop because we don't want the persecution. If I stop doing it and everybody else is doing it, they're going to call me holier than thou. They're going to say I was this. They're going to say I was doing that. They're going to say I was doing that. <sighs> Come on. I don't know about you, but I want to reach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to reach my, my, my heavenly assignments and my earthly assignments. I want to be able to reach the world and I want to be able to reach heaven when it's time. I want to be able to touch and tap in. I want to be able to make it through those pearly days. Come on, that's it. Don't be afraid to become. Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot be afraid to become. Come on, I love... Um, 1 Corinthians, I want to say it, so let me find it and then I'll tell it to you. Bless your name, oh God. I love God. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe a second. Ooh, God, I love you on today. Hallelujah. Your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, oh God. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's go to First Corinthians. 
I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Bless your name, God. Amen. Amen. I remember, uh, Chelsea, you gave me a word and you said the Lord told you to tell me that I cannot lose momentum. Because if I lose momentum, and it's so true, I promise you, it's so true. This season has offered, would you like to take depression, woman of God? Would you like to take discouragement, woman of God? Would you like to take uh, that this is just too hard and you should just take a sabbatical and you should just stay in the bed and you, you deserve to wallow? That's what this season has offered me, but I remember the word. Come on. You cannot lose. It's true. Oh, I don't know about nobody else, but I got so much that God is building through my hands. God, I love your word on today. I can't lay down. Come on. I can't lay down. God, I bless your name. Come on. A day will cost me too much. Laying down in depression. I'm not talking, hallelujah. I'm not talking about taking a rest because the rest is fine. But I'm talking about a laying down a day in depression. It will cost me too much and I might not get up. <laughs> Gotta learn how to be pressed. Still go through. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Corinthians Ooh, 12 and verse, and verse uh, 23. This is Paul talking. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder, been put in prison. More often, been whipped three, been whipped times without number. I faced death again and again. Five times, the Jewish leaders gave me thirty-nine lashes. Three times, I was beaten with rods. Once, I was stoned. Three times, I was shipwrecked. Once, I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea. I traveled on many long journeys. I faced danger from rivers rivers, and from robbers. I faced danger from my own people, from the Jews, as well as the Gentiles. I faced danger in cities, in the deserts, on the sea. God, I love your word on today. And I have faced dangers from men who claim to be believers. Yes, my God, come on, but are not. I have worked hard and long and, and enduring many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty and I have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothes to keep me warm. Then besides all of the things that I've been through personally, <laughs> God, I love your word. <laughs> In spite of all the personal attacks that I've had to persevere through to do my God assignment, verse 28 says, then besides all that, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. I still got to do my God assignment. Come on. I let me tell you about me, Julia. I've been homeless. I've been paralyzed on my whole left side. I lost my memory. I was gay for 11 years. I've been mistreated, mishandled, talked about. I'm getting ready to start going on my, this is my fourth divorce I'm getting ready to have. Come on. I done been mistreated. I done been turned on by my spiritual daughters. I've been turned on by people. Come on. I done been mishandled. I done been talked about, used, abused, mistreated, been in abusive marriages, physically, I mean, spiritually abusive, mentally abusive. Abusive, emotionally abusive. I battle schizophrenia. God, I love your word on today. My God, depression, anxiety. Come on, listen. I, I did. I didn't do. I did smoke marijuana for a season. I did. Uh, I did. Um pop pills uh recreationally for a season come on uh i did uh alcohol for a season i used to go to the nightclub i used to love to dress naked and be degrading with my own body come on i went through a whole lot of things god i bless your name but i'm standing here today to let you know that you can go through all that he'll still wash you he will still clean you he will still use you for his glory he will still bless you beyond measure my god come on eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that god has prepared for those that continue to pursue in this season the things that god has prepared for those that press on to the mark of the high calling my god come on for those that continue to 
press forward, those that keep going beyond their comfort zone, beyond what's comfortable to them, beyond complacency, those that go beyond laziness, those that go beyond lack. Come on, I can't worry about if I have it or if I don't. If I got to walk, I guess I just got to walk. My God, come on. I'm talking to somebody on today who has the, who has the, um, the urge to want to just do what's safe and want to do what's comfortable. Peter did what was not safe. It was not comfortable to step outside of the boat. My God, I'm talking to somebody on today who has a fear of failure. You're afraid to do it because you're, what if it fails? So what if it fails? My God, then I walk away with more experience. God, I love your word on today. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. You don't have to walk in shame. I walk away with experience, but you're not going to, I'm not going to not try it because I'm afraid to fail. Come on. That is not God. There is no failure in him. We only walk in victory. So even if it falls apart, I walk away with knowledge. I walk away with experience. God, I love your word. I walk away with tools that I can build again, build something again another time. Come on, I'm talking to somebody on today. This is your season to keep going. Don't just walk, run. <laughs> God, I love your word on today. My God, come on, I'm talking and do not, you're right there and God is wanting you to come a little further, come a little faster, go a little more, come a little deeper. God, I bless your name. Come on, stop doing what's just comfortable. I'm just going to pray about it, sis. No, get up and put your hand to the plow. God, I love your word on today. I trust God is going to take you further than you even want to go, but all you got to do is be willing to go and go now. Come on. You don't got to plan it. God said, don't learn me mechanically. God, I love your word on today. What are you saying, God? Don't learn me. Well, God's A, B, C, D. He said, I might want to go A, Q, C, R, P, T, Z, N, L, T. Come on. You got to let God do whatever he wants to do in your life. My God, come on. Your feet, your hands, your mouth, his strength. <laughs> God, I love your word on today. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. Paul said, everything that I've had to go through in my personal life, Y'all have no idea what I've been going through behind closed doors, but I get up every morning. My God, come on. And I show up. God, I bless your name. Come on. I get up every morning. God, I bless your name. And I show up. Come on. Because this is my God assignment. This is my God assignment. God, I love your word on today. And we have to understand that the kingdom of God has the greatest and the highest authority of all and everything moving in the earth realm. I don't care about no government system. I don't care about no judicial system. The kingdom of God has the highest authority. And until you live like that, my God, come on, you will always live in lack. You'll always live below your means. You'll always have operate. God, I bless your name. Come on, I'm trying to tell somebody on today. I was thinking about how these kids is cutting up. These kids is cutting up and doing the most. And they done told you, oh, you can't whoop your child. We're going to come and uh, we're going to come and arrest you. Are you going to go to uh, what? All of this just stuff. The government laws about your children. Baby, I got stretch marks for these. You got me messed up. Come on. I push them. Y'all. I carry them. My God. Come on. See, we've let the we've let the world put so much fear in us. We have adapted things that God never said. Let me, let's talk about these wedding vows. Let's talk about that for a second. For better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health. Do y'all realize that that did not come out of the Bible? Find it. Didn't come out of the Bible. The Bible says love is patient. It's kind. It's not rude. It's not easily angered. God, I bless your name. Come on. And so for better or for worse, that didn't come out of the Bible. That did not come out of the Bible. And see, I just don't believe in fighting for marriage that's fighting me. I don't believe in fighting for something that's tearing me down anymore. I just don't believe. I've been not believing in it, but the Lord told me to hold tight and give him time for repentance. But I don't believe in being torn down to the point you are built a beat down pencil nub. I don't believe even the testimony of staying with people until, well, you know, grandma, she stayed with Papa for 35 years. He cheated on her. He beat her. He mistreated her. But you know, he turned it on around. He turned it on around. No, he was too old to do anything else. 
Of course he turned it on the round. He was too old and no one else wanted him. I no longer believe that you should stay until you're mentally in sight. I stayed with my children's father. at tw- I, I got with him at 21, We got, well, maybe 20. But I got with him when I was very young. And by the time I left, because the, everyone keeps teaching you. Exactly. Thank you. And that's exactly the Bible says divorce was given because of the hardness of hearts. I stayed with him because the because the church was like, oh, just stay with him, baby. Just stay. Just just ask God to change you until God changes him. My God, come on. I left out of that relationship mentally. Come on. I left out of that relationship so broken. I was shattered in so many pieces because I had bad advice. You don't stay until you have no sense. Now, I will say there was one man of God that I went to get counseling from. Yeah, there was one man, a man of God, me and my husband, we went and sat. And when my husband went to go to the bathroom, the pastor looked at me and he said, baby, he said, I've never told anyone this in my whole pastoral career. I didn't understand it then. I get it now. He said, run, run fast and run now. This I, He said, I'll counsel you if you want me to, but my best advice is run. Yeah. I wish I would have listened, <laughs> but it's okay, baby. I got so much knowledge under my belt. God, I bless your name. Listen, you don't want to miss our divorce conference that is coming up. We're not celebrating divorce. God, I bless your name. Come on. But what we are doing is talking about holy matrimony. God, I bless your name. Come on. Someone told me, they said, oh, you preach divorce. I don't preach divorce, baby. I preach holy union. God, I bless your name. Come on. I preach holy union because so many children are being raised in broken homes and then they think that's how it's supposed to be. The spirit of ugly is being deposited on our children because when daddy's not coming home, God, I bless your name. Come on. And he's mistreating mama and he's doing her wrong. Then mama's walking around with the spirit of depression and then the child is not getting nurtured. Come on. When the man is being, is doing the best that he can and the wife is acting ugly and acting crazy. Come on. It throws off the whole household. And yes, God gives people time to repent but some people have stayed so far beyond the expiration date that they don't even realize they spoiled milk. Hmm. Help us, Holy Ghost. Okay, someone said, I think divorce happens when we don't court anymore. And I could definitely agree that that could be a part of it. Absolutely. But I also believe in Holy Union because think about the Bible. And listen, we've gotten so far from the word of God. In the word of God, they just got married. They actually didn't do a whole lot of they Boaz seen well, Boaz in the roof story. They got together, Jacob and Rebecca, they got together. But it, it's just I, what I've learned within my own self, what I've learned through four marriages, glory to God. <sighs> Bless God. Uh, what I've learned through through four marriages, um, I have learned that six in six months people will show you who they are. I learned that. That's what I have learned. Within six months, yeah, people will show you exactly who they are, and it just is what it is. Exactly, that's good. They got married and forgot about God. Now that's the piece right there. That's the piece right there. My God. Come on, it's okay. Listen, I got several books coming out. I t- listen, you have to learn how to turn your pain into purpose. You have to learn how to turn your pain into purpose. And But many people stop at the pain. If I, if I stop at the pain and I don't push forward, I don't reach purpose. Okay, it happened. There is no condemnation. Come on. And for those that are in Christ Jesus, many don't want to tell their testimony. They don't want to be open and honest. No, I've been going through hell behind closed doors, but God has been keeping me. Come on. I love God. And I know that God would not allow me to go through something that would change the whole trajectory of my life. But I got to come out when he says come out. My God, come on. And I got to stay in when he says stay in. God, I bless your name. I love God and all of his children. God is talking to somebody on today. Come on. I don't want you to stop at the pain. Depression is stopping at the pain. Anxiety is stopping at the pain. I want you to push forward to the mark of the high calling. My God, Paul said I had to go through all of this. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Somebody said because this heartbreak feels like death. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
It definitely does. And I'm telling you, like I just said, it's not that it's not that I'm not going through the pain, the separation of divorce, the tearing of the spirit, the soul ties that have to be broken. Absolutely. Yes. But I'm telling you, every time that pain wants to rise up, I tell God, Lord, keep me, hold me. Lord, don't let this pain make me drown. My God, come on. I gave up everything. I came 10 hours, moved, gave up my church, my house, my business to move to be with this man and got down here. And it has been crazy. But God has been faithful because the one thing that I know about God, God, I bless your name. The one thing that I know about God is that I checked in with God before I got married. I checked in. I checked in. I said, God, do I have permission to be pursued by this man? And so because God gave me permission to be pursued, he knew that it was going to go left. My God. But God also knew that he was going to use this to position me to get me in Georgia. I heard one of my friends that's a prophet, mighty woman of God. She's very accurate. And she told me, she said, woman of God, she said, that's not your forever husband, but your husband lives in Georgia and God is positioning you through this marriage. Now I'm like, child, who wants to get married and divorce again? Let's go. But I'm going to tell you, when I got married, the Lord said it this way. On my wedding night, I sat on the bed and the Lord said to me, he said, "Um, you are breaking generational curses. You are breaking generational curses. And I said, how am I breaking generational curses, Lord? I just keep getting divorces. It's not really that fun. My God, come on. He said, no, you're breaking the curse of staying in toxic marriage. Many of my aunties married into toxic relationships that the man was not holy. They might have been providers, but they were not priests in their own home. <laughs> my God, come on. Many of my aunties, my grandma, she died in an abusive marriage. My grandfather was, uh, my grandma was like, and granddaddy was still pushing her down the steps and still doing all kind of talking crazy. My God, I, that's not going to be my testimony. The Lord said, you're breaking generational curses. Many don't want to leave the marriage. God, I bless your name. Come on. Many don't want to go, don't want to leave the marriage because they don't want the shame. They don't want the condemnation. And I have been through it. I was married when I went through my last divorce. I was a preacher when I went through. I was a pastor, had my own church. So no, I definitely don't want the backlash that has to come with it. But at the very end of the day, baby, you you don't I can't stay any longer in what I was having to go through come on and I always say if you think it if you think oh that's why would she leave him he's single you can get him bless God come on see we have to stop living under such condemnation that we can't do what's best for us I have to the Bible says Yes. If you get the Bible says if you get married, if it's best get married. If you need to stay single, stay single, but do whatever is best so that you can serve God to the best of your ability. My God, and many can't serve God to the best of their ability because their home life is jacked up. Hmm. Come on, help us. Yeah. So true. My God. Yeah, that song is necessary, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and sometimes you got to let people, that is absolutely true. Yeah. yeah, and the church has taught that divorce is not of God. Absolutely. That's what they've taught, and it's awful. It's awful. But at the end of the day, listen, I promise you, I didn't believe in divorce until the Lord brought it to my doorstep. And I was like, he was like, so you, what you going to do? Matter of fact, the Lord gave me a dream, okay? The Lord gave me a dream. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a dream to marry the man. When it was time to get married, the Lord showed me his face. He presented him through dream. And then when, whenever it went to the left and I was just like, whoo, I'm not talking about my current marriage, but I said, uh, whenever it went to the left and I cried out to God one morning, I was getting ready for church. I was getting ready to go preach. And I said, God, I was walking through the house and I said, God, I'm dying in this marriage. I said, Lord, help me. I did not think about divorce. I wasn't thinking about divorce. I thought I was just going to have to suffer through a dry spiritually dead, emotionally dead, immature marriage my whole entire life because that's what the church has taught. I said, God, I'm dying on the inside. He was jealous. He called a church meeting with the men at the church and asked them, so what do y'all really feel like? What do y'all really feel about having a female pastor? Who does that? Come on. Listen, I love God and all his children. Mm. Come on. And so I'm going through this, y'all, and I'm stressed out. And I said, God, help me. 
help me. And when I tell you a couple of nights after the Lord gave me a dream and in the dream, I was getting ready to go out and preach. I was in my office. I was going to go preach. And uh, the Lord said, I'm like, well, God, how do I say he told me you tell the people you got to tell them today that you're getting a divorce. And I'm like, how do I tell them? And he just dropped the words in my heart. He just dropped the words in my heart. Okay. Um, and I'm like, whoo, bless God. And so I said it out of my mouth, just like he dropped it in my heart. I am getting a divorce, but we will not stop following God. Come on, because they stopped following God because of the hardness of people's hearts. Whew. Help us, Holy Ghost. Somebody says, so why would God show me a, a man to marry and then to divorce? Um, well, the, the purpose, there was purpose on it. There was definitely purpose on the marriage. The Lord presented the opportunity, but he also said, no good thing will I withhold from those that diligently seek me and walk upright. So just because he didn't want to serve God, he didn't want to do right because he was jealous, because he was acting a fool. God wasn't going to make me suffer. So that's why he presented it. God presents opportunities. Even I was reading in, uh, I want to say I was in Zechariah 6 last night. And they was talking about how he was a priest and a king. And how God said you have to have balance between both roles. And the Bible talks about how he said prophesy these to the people. And if they obey my commandments, this then they will receive the blessing. And so it is with marriage. You don't get to take, a, you don't get to take people and mistreat them. Jesus and God don't even do that. The Father, you can't. He said, even in Romans 1 and 28, because you want your own way, God abandoned them. See, people, the church will teach you to stay in marriage. God, uh, God is, God is not, a, somebody said God is not a divorce. He, he divorced his kids. I guess you ain't reading your Bible good. Don't worry. I got, I got, I got it all. To, I promise you. The Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and gave me scripture after scripture after scripture. He walked me through this word. But I'm gonna tell you what the Lord told me. He said, "Many people that's so hard on divorce, they gonna believe in it. They next marriage, they gonna believe in it. They gonna believe real good. <laughs> they gonna believe real good." Yes. The Bible says that God divorced his children in the Old Testament. I want to say it's in Ezra or it's in Jeremiah. Might be Hosea. But the, the Bible says that he divorced his children. So if God can divorce, then if I go to Ephesians, the Bible says imitate God because of their idolatry, because of their disobedience. Come on. People are suffering behind closed doors with mental illness, verbal abuse, uh, physical abuse. Listen, I'm, the Lord even showed me one called social abuse. I didn't even know it. Listen, if you have been affected by divorce, you're going through divorce. You're facing divorce. You may say, well, I've been divorced three years, but you're not married. I want you to come. I want you to join into this conference. It is going to be October the 25th through the 29th. It is going to bless you. I promise you. I promise you there is a place of healing that we got to go forth from. Whew. Help us, Holy Ghost. I want us to get healed so that we can go forth. And I want the teaching to be correct. I want the teaching to be correct. And another way, people that say they don't believe in divorce, they're going to believe in it because they're gonna, their daughters are going to go through a hellish marriage. I don't want that to be the case. It just is what it is. And then they're going to believe in divorce. Yes? So you got to be careful till you've been there. You don't know what I was going through behind closed doors. No one who is in a happy, holy marriage is seeking a divorce. Get that. Okay? No one. No one that is being treated right mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially. No one is no one is seeking a divorce when they're being treated right. So let's stop being so religious and let's understand that the Lord came to set us free, not to put us in bondage. Come on, let's come. Let's come. The Lord came to set us free, not to put us further in bondage. Yeah. Whom the son sets free is free indeed. The Lord said, I came to give you life and give you life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Come on. God is good, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, and that's good. Someone said, I, I understand that divorce is permitted, but I don't want to have a hard heart. And if every person felt like that, marriage would work. Because my, my last husband, I promise, I, let me tell you, I went to one of my friends' house, the same woman that prophesied that I just said that she said my husband was in Georgia. Um, I went to this woman's house. I had not talked to her, had not seen her, didn't know nothing that was going on in her life, none of that. 
And me and my husband at the time, we went to her house to visit and I just stopped by to see her because I was in the neighborhood and we went in and we just sit on the couch and the spirit of God began to fall and she went into a trance because that's how she prophesied sometimes. She went into a trance and she began to prophesy. She began to prophesy. She began to prophesy. Um, and so as she began to prophesy, she said, she began to tell me everything that I, that was in my heart that was concerning my marriage. She began to prophesy about the things at the church that wasn't right. She began to prophesy about the things at um, at home that wasn't right, the things at work that wasn't right, financially the things that was not right. My God, come on. She began to prophesy the whole thing. And then she turned to the man of God. She turned to him and she told him, she said, the Lord said he has given you one out of his very own treasure chest, but you are not doing right by her. You prayed and asked God for a holy woman and you're not doing right by her. And if you don't turn, the Lord is going to take your life and he is going to bless her. She's going to go on with her life and God is going to bless her. I was like, Jesus, my God. So when the Lord, a couple of weeks later, when the Lord gave me the dream to get a divorce, I said, Lord, don't take his life. Don't take his life, Lord. Just take his wife. Because when you lose a good wife, baby, you have lost your life. Because two become one flesh. Two become one flesh. So when you lose your wife, you do lose your life. Come on, my God. And then shortly after, the Lord gave me the dream to get the divorce. And so, listen, we have to understand that God is God. And you don't got to stand for nobody. And that's the thing. Hallelujah. Um, somebody said, people get married because they can't control their lustful desires. And when and when it gets old, then they then they quit you. And I can see that too. Yeah, I, you know, that might you, you might be on to something right there. That's actually good. I didn't even come from that angle, but that's good. That's very good. I can see that. Very, yeah. Um, bless God. Hmm. Help us, Holy Ghost. Yeah, so, so true. Because people, you can't listen. It's God never desired. Jesus was beat. He was beat. He was whipped. He was bruised. Come on, and the chastisement of my peace was upon him. So why we're telling people that they got to stay and be beat, better scorn, mentally wrecked. No, come on. Well, listen, sis, and people will say this is a testimony. You know, I went through hell for all them years and God kept me and God did keep you. Absolutely. But my thoughts, just my own personal thoughts, if all I can rely on is God and I can't rely on my spouse, then I need to be single. There is no need to be relying on dragging somebody alone. Come on, listen, we're going to get free, y'all. We're going to get free. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Someone said, I, you want to get married, but you're afraid the person won't accept you for who you are. Well, if they're, pers if they're a person of God, and you're a person of God, and you're holy and they holy, they're going to accept it. Yeah, my God. Hallelujah. Listen, they're going to accept it because it is, they're going to accept you for who you are. All of your uniquenesses, I don't call them flaws. I don't call them flaws, but all of your uniquenesses, they're going to, bliss. I promise it's so true. The things that you think are flaws, they're going to be like, oh, that's so cute. Come on. That's how you know your person because they accept all of the pieces of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Paul said, besides all of that, Everything that I've had to go through. Verse 28, he said, besides all of this, I have the daily burden of my concern for the church. Who is weak without me feeling that weakness? Who is led astray and I do not burn with anger? Come on, I still got, this is the thing. Even through all that, you have to keep a pure heart. This is why you got to forgive. I had to forgive daily. This is why you got to forgive so that your heart can stay pure so that you can still feel the burden of the people you can still feel the pricking of the heart see the enemy's job is to make you go through so much and to make you hurt so much that you can't that your heart becomes hard and you're not sensitive to the spirit of god the moving of god i cannot that's why every time that pain begins to come and rise up in my heart i gotta say god just help me god i trust you lord don't let this pain overtake me god i give it to you and i just going to worship in my heart and in my spirit Spirit, trying to teach you how to go through. Come on. And I asked that. I said, God, why I got to go through everything publicly? He said, because you have to teach people how to go through. Hallelujah. You have to teach people how to go through. Hallelujah. Amen. 
You have to teach people how to go through. He said, many a times you're going to be around situations and it's going to be stuff that just happens. This this crazy stuff that happens because you got to teach people. Yeah. Hallelujah. We definitely, we're praying for your mother, Teresa. We ask that the Lord touch and that even for yourself, that you begin to pray for your mom. When the Bible says the signs of a believer, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so I want you to pray for your mom. I want you to lay hands. We touch and we agree with your prayers that you pray for your mama. I think a lot of times the church has handicapped people. Yes, let's come and let's touch and agree. Let's come together and pray. But your prayers are just as strong as my prayers. My God, come on. If you pray with a sincere heart, with clean hands. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Don't give up on God. Woo! Don't give up on God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't give up on God. Go through your process. Everyone has a hard process that they got to go through. And that's where you learn the character of God and the nature of God. Go through your process. Don't stop because it's hard. Don't stop because it's ugly. Don't stop because it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us. Don't stop because it's uncomfortable. I don't know what that scripture is uh, to start in one. Let's pray and ask. You do have to ask Lord, the Lord. I don't know that scripture by heart, but you have to know. You have to ask the Lord. The one other thing scripture that stands out to me is that if the unbeliever, the Bible says, if the unbeliever wants to leave, let them go. And you are no longer bound. bound. Bound means you're tied to. And if you're no longer bound, it means you're free. Okay. People have taught if you get divorced, then just stay single. Why do I got to suffer? Because they didn't do right. See how, I mean, it's such an off teaching. It is such an off teaching, y'all. It's crazy. People just out here believe in anything. Bless God. But I'm going to tell you, listen, I'm going, I'm just going to keep my ear to heaven. I'm gonna keep my ear to heaven and I'm gonna trust God. Because they're gonna talk about you when they're gonna talk about you when you're doing good, they're gonna talk about you when you're doing bad, they're gonna talk about you on a good day, they're gonna talk about you on a bad day. So what? Let them talk. Baby, while you talking, I'm walking. <laughs> Come on. You have to let that be your testimony. You have to let that be your testimony. You have to, while they talking, I'm walking. Come on through. Don't stop at the pain. If you get nothing else from this live today, don't stop because it's hard. Don't stop because it's complicated. It is complicated. I was talking to um to, to one of my daughters yesterday, and she's she's a single mother, and this is a hard season. How do I find babysitting? And how do I find a ride? And how do I do this? And how do I do that? It's not easy, but many stop because it's complicated. So what? Untangle, unravel, figure that thing out one thing at a time, one day at a time, moment by moment. God help me. God help me. God, I'm trusting you to help me. Send help today, God. Come on. We gotta use that word H-E-L-P a little more. Help, help, help. Give me strategy. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Provide for me, God. Come on. He's just waiting. Don't stop at the pain. There's purpose on the other side. But if you drown at the pain, will not reach purpose. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking today. We will not stop at the pain. There's purpose. You have not allowed anything in our life that you are not going to use. We thank you that you will use it for our good, for your glory, and it will be victorious in you. But there is no failure in you. Speaking to the spirit of somebody on today who has been down. Come on, get up, woman of God. Get up. Man of God, depression can no longer have you. This is just a moment in time. The Bible says, oh, death, where is your sting? And I'm not even talking about all physical death, but come on. The thing that was sent to kill me, the thing that was sent to take me out, you don't even hurt me. My God, because I, re I realized the Bible says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm going to overcome this. This will not take me out. Loneliness will not take me out. Rejection will not take me out. Grief will not take me out. Come on. Complacency, laziness, my lack of understanding will not take me out. Me not wanting to do it will not take me out. Come on. Oh, death, where is your sting? I will not stop at the pain. I will not stop at the sting, but I'm coming through. <laughs> Bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we trust your hand. We trust your hand. We trust you. 
We trust you. And some of us are learning to trust you, but we will not learn to trust you through our trials unless we put our hand to the plow and begin walking and don't look back. Keep walking and don't look back. Keep walking. God, I love your word on today. And don't look back. All things are possible. All things are possible. Hmm. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I love God and all his children. I don't know what you're con you said. My contradictions are, are hard to get past. I don't know what you said. I'm contradicting. You might not listen to the whole thing, but I pray that what you get is good. And this is the thing. I'm talking to several people. So let me help somebody. Every single word ain't for you, but get what's for you. When I go to the buffet, every single word ain't for me. So you might think it's contradicting if you're trying to take every single word for you. No, I'm talking to so many different people on so many different platforms and it's whatever God has put in my heart to say and so whatever God puts in my heart to say it might not be for you so if that ain't for you just don't take that word but take what's for you take what's for you come on on a buffet you don't eat all of the food at the buffet you take what you like you take what is for you what is nourishing to you hey God I love your word I love God and all his children y'all come on let's have a good day on purpose Come on, let's bless God. Let's be encouraged. I want you to do something today. I want you to go past your comfort zone today. I want you to push past on today. Hmm. Come on. I want you to push past. I want you to set a goal, accomplish it today, no matter what. Thank you, Lord. I love God. He's good. I want you to have a good day on purpose. Be encouraged. Know that if God be for you, he's greater than the world against you. If you would like to sow into the word today, our cash app is dollar sign makeover ministry. I got to go because I got something to do today. Bless God. Uh, but have a good day and I will see you all tomorrow, 7 a.m. Um, hallelujah. 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're right here on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. You also can check out our um Okay, you also can check out our uh, website, which is makeoverministry.com. So you said divorce is in the case, divorce is only in the case of adultery. And I agree with you on that. However, all adultery is not sexual. There's spiritual adultery, emotional adultery, mental adultery. Hold tight. You must then catch that teaching. My God, come on. I love you. Have a good day on purpose. We'll talk soon. Be encouraged.